a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for this informational webinar on Kellogg School of Management's upcoming online program, Advertising and Marketing Communication Strategy. We are so thrilled to have all of you here with us today. So on the line with us today, it is not just me. We are also thrilled that we have Professor Kevin McTigg on the line with us as well, Clinical Associate Professor of Marketing at Kellogg School of Management. Professor McTigg, good morning. Hello, hello. And I'm going to be handing things over to the professor in just a moment to go over this amazing course. But first, before we do that, why Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education? Well, there are dozens of reasons why you should choose Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education for your online education. But just the three main points that we really want to hit. Uh, first is our rock star faculty, like Professor McTigg. Uh, Kellogg has renowned thought leaders, but not just renowned thought leaders, but also every faculty member that I've ever met from Kellogg has at least 20 years of experience in their field. They are practitioners. They are working in their field. And they are going to share that knowledge and facilitate thoughtful discussion in real time throughout the program. So Northwestern Kellogg has some of the best faculty in the world. And that is always going to be the number one reason why to choose Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education. But also at Kellogg, you're going to have many opportunities to interact with your global peers through both formal and informal activities. So you're going to be able to network, get to know each other. Uh, you're going to be meeting people who work in similar industries in different continents, different industries right down the street. You're also going to have a high quality transformative learning experience with timely actionable content. The purpose of this program is to give you tools, to give you knowledge that you can apply right now to your current career, to any future career. We want to give you a rich interactive experience and that is what you will get with Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education. So with that, we actually wanna dive right in. I'm gonna hand things over to uh, our amazing faculty who is on the line with us today, Professor Kevin McTigg. You can see his bio there, but I'm gonna let him uh, do a little bit more of introduction of himself and his other co-faculty, and then he will take you through uh, this amazing program that we have to offer. So Professor McTigg, take it away, sir. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so guys, I'm just gonna read this slide to you. No, I'm not gonna read this slide to you. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining us this morning. This, this program that we've got here, um, our marketing communication strategy is led by myself and Professor Derek Rucker. And the two of us, I've got a picture of Kellogg behind me here. The two of us teach this class, advertising and marketing communication strategy at Kellogg. It's one of the most popular electives we have in the MBA program um, amongst all of our students where we go into basically what this class is. We've created an online version of the class that he and I teach here. Now, what I think makes the class special is that Derek and I come from different backgrounds. We're both professors at Kellogg now, but Professor Rucker is a behavioral scientist that, that grew up in academia, that is one of the more one of the more famous, well-published authors in the space of advertising and behavioral economics. My background, on the other hand, is coming up through the agency world. So I worked at agencies for a long time, digital agencies, traditional agencies. Then I worked brand side for a long time. And so I've been on both sides of the, the table when it comes to advertising development. And over the past uh, five years or so, I've been full-time teaching here at Kellogg. And what I think is really important about that is that we take a very, I mean, Mark mentioned it a little bit. We take a very practical approach to what we're teaching here. Um, it's easy to get into the, the academics of advertising and, and what should be and things like that. And the problem is that sometimes when you do that, it, it doesn't become applicable to us in our daily lives. It doesn't help us make our agency relationship better tomorrow. It doesn't help us get to better work tomorrow. And so the combination of both of our backgrounds um, helps us create the program that we want. And that's a program that helps us get to meaningfully better advertising right away. So as I said, he comes to us as, I mean, highly awarded, right? He wins like the top elected professor award. And as I mentioned, I think he's the most published professor in our entire marketing department. And Kellogg has one of the more famous marketing departments in the world. We got a U.S. News and World Report came out and ranked uh, Kellogg as having the top marketing program of any MBA program in the world. And so our, our chair sent out an email like, hey, guys, congratulations. 
you know, top marketing program in the world. And then another faculty responded back like, hey, you know, we've won this for the past 20 years. I'm not sure we can celebrate it every single time. Um, but it's great. It's wonderful. Uh, our history at Kellogg and marketing goes back forever. Um, we were one of the first schools uh, with Professor uh, Phil Kotler to basically turn marketing into an academic discipline that can be studied, refined, and made better. And so that's where the heritage comes from at Kellogg. And we've kind of kept it through to this day. I'll tell you a little bit about the program. So here's the first thing. We've had a lot of discussions about, like, who is this program for? And I have a lot of students that sign up for our classes, right? They're just like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. It is fun, but it is very specifically geared towards people that are making advertising strategy decisions, okay? And so this could be, the first thing I've got there is junior to mid-level marketers, right? So I used to work in brand management. If I was hiring someone and I had to, to ha have them do my advertising for my brand, I would want them to have this course, right? Because I need them to know how to interact with the agency, how to write a clear creative brief, how to evaluate creative effectively. I need you to do all those things like with ease, with confidence and maintain a good agency relationship. And so that's where it's been. I think that's a sweet spot for it. Um, senior executives. So if you're managing a bunch of folks that are creating advertising for you, right? This is a program that you could take and then say, ah, okay, let me introduce some of these frameworks to my team. And I know that we're going to get to consistently better results over time if I can implement this across my team. And so it could be if you're, if you're kind of getting into this and you're learning the ropes, it could be great. If you're managing a bunch of people that you need to improve their skill set dramatically, you could take this and kind of cascade it down. And the last types of folks that we see come in are from the, actually the agency side, right? So you got the brand side folks and the agency side folks. Um, and the agency side folks come in because they're like, listen, um, we're, we're not getting the best strategies from our clients. We're not getting great briefs. I need to help them understand how to do this better. We as an agency are gonna take it upon ourselves to improve, um, improve the work, improve the effectiveness of the work. And so let me take this class and so I can be a better partner to my clients. And so those are the three kind of core groups I think that it's, that it's best for, but I'm happy to take specific questions. You know, if you're like, oh, this is the situation I'm in, you know, do you think it's right for me? One of my big things with my class here and my class here online is I don't want to talk anybody into this that it's not right for, right? This is, this is meant for people that have their hands on advertising, that are writing strategy, that are evaluating ads, and we need to, we need to make it better. Okay, so let me just walk through the course, all right? And so what we've done is over the years, because we've taught some kind of advertising class for you know, 25 years at Kellogg, um, we've continued to update the class, right? You have to update the class because obviously digital is a big deal. And so, I mean, you have to think about how that's gonna affect everything. But one of the big things we do is we talk to alums. We, we reach out to Kellogg alumni that are in the business, that are getting into more senior roles, and we ask them, hey, listen, we're going to teach this advertising class, and we'll probably send some of these students to you. What do they have to know? What's the most important thing that we can teach them before they get to you? And consistently, that has been, can you, can you, help, can you help them create communication strategy, right? I have an agency that's going to make the ads. I mean, the, the, the digital, like programmatic media, like somebody does that Facebook advertising, I could teach them on a Saturday. What I need you to do is teach them how to, to write a strategy, how to create a sound fundamental communication strategy, because from there, that could become a TikTok execution. That could become a YouTube execution. That could become a, a TV ad, or it could become an email, right? It could become a, a a B2B website, right? That communicates what we need to, get to communicate. And so that's been the thing consistently over time that we've heard. And so the class is shaped around that. How do we kind of fundamentally build this communication strategy? And so what we do is we start with the core of communication strategy, which is a creative brief. And many of you on the, on the call or watching this later have, may have done a creative brief, right? And it's the creative brief is basically kind of a strategic set of instructions that we give our partner, whether it be internal or external, to go create some kind of creative output that's meant to achieve business goals. 
And if we do that really well, then the work is going to be better, right? And if we do that really well, we're going to have less spin. So both Derek and I, Professor Rucker and I, are constantly meeting with firms to help them with this, okay? Huge firms, small firms, all over the place. And what we're hearing over and over again is like, listen, we're in this place with our agency where we're getting inconsistent results, right? And we, we, we can't figure out how to fix it. Or every time that we start a project, it seems to take too many iterations and everything's taking way too long. And now we're getting into this. I mean, we might even have like a difficult or contentious agency relationship and it's just not fun, right? And so we start with this kind of core baseline of how do you write? Let's just start there. How do you write like a great creative brief? What are the components? What, is, what goes into it? What do you need to look for? And then one of the things that we always talk about is where do we see, where do we see people mess up the most? Like what are the most common problems and how do we avoid those problems? Again, again, to Mark's earlier point, some of the feedback that we've received on the folks that have taken this course prior is they're reaching out and saying like, I'm only a third in and I've already been able to apply this at work. I'm not making this up. Like, and I love these kind of comments, right? So the ability to like take one of the modules, have a light bulb go off, go back into the office the next day and immediately make change. Like that is, that's what we want. That's what we're looking to do with the course. All right. As I get into the second piece here, setting objectives, this is where, I mean, I, I, I love this one. This is one of the ones I do the most in like exec ad and talking to companies. It's what are we trying to do with the ad, right? So for many of you, you might see the Super Bowl this Sunday, right? And Kellogg will famously do our Super Bowl ad review and we'll kind of go through what makes an ad good and bad. Um, there will be a lot of ads that don't have a point. There will be a lot of ads that are missing an objective, okay? And so what I wanna do in this section, what we're gonna talk about is like, how do you write like a really good advertising objective? And you might think, well, a good advertising objective is like, I want my sales to go up. I know, I know, of course you do, okay? But giving that to the agency is like saying, hey agency, can you make good things happen? And they're like, sure. I mean, yes, we all agree that that'd be great, but like that you've given them nothing that's gonna help point them in a, in a more specific direction to achieve your goals. And so one of the immediate things we can do right away is just break our, like, I want to grow sales into something that is very specific to the, to the advertising that we're doing or the communications piece we're creating. And so not only does the agency kind of get it and they have a better chance of achieving it, but we can also measure it far better, right? Because yes, there's ways to like measure did sales grow with advertising, with a lot of different tools we've got out there now, but none of them are perfect, right? Even like digital multi-touch attribution, it's directionally helpful, okay? And so I, I really wanna give them something that like I can measure and that I know is gonna lead to sales. And so we're gonna go into how do you do that? How do you write great goals? How do you tie these marketing goals or communication goals back into your business goals? So when someone at the top says, you know, why are we doing this? whatever this execution is, you can say, oh, because if I change this, it changes this, grows this. And so here's the linkage. It's tight. We're going to measure it. I can justify what I'm doing. Uh, in module three, we get into targeting. Okay. And so targeting, it's oddly, it's one of the areas where sometimes there's some pushback and discussion of like, I don't know if we need this, blah, blah, blah. At its, at its core, all we're doing is we're trying to focus our message on the people most likely to respond positively to it so we don't waste our money, right? We're trying to be efficient about where I show the ad so that the people I show it to are most likely to respond and I'm not showing it to people that aren't gonna respond, right? So I'm just spending my money wisely. It's a prioritization exercise. Well, it turns out that it's more important than just for the efficiency of your media dollars, right? Without a good target, we lack the ability to say something important to our audience, okay? So I was recently working with a really, really large um, US fast food company and they have enough money to reach everybody in the United States as much as they want, okay? They still had me come in to talk about targeting because what they're running into is that if you're saying, if you're talking to literally everyone, 
then what do you say? Because people are different and they have different needs. They have different things that turn them on and, and, and whatever it might be. And so if I can't narrow in on a specific target, then the message I'm going to convey will be unnecessarily vague. And so how do I get to a good target, right? What makes a good target? And then listen, what if I want multiple targets? In my business, I, I, it turns out I'm in B2B or I'm in pharma, or I got something else going on, or I've got a secondary target, or I've got a new users and past users, and I don't want to alienate past users. So how do you kind of like deal with the nuances of having multiple targets without losing focus? Okay. And so that's a really, I think that's a very practically helpful course and just or module and just coming up with a methodology to take a bunch of targets and say, okay, I have a clear path now and how I'm going to prioritize these. And this is going to lead to more effective communications. In module four, Professor Rucker teaches this one because he's a behavioral science guy. And this is all about consumer insights. And it's a lot about how do you get to good insights and really what is an insight and why does it matter? And, and a lot of it is he gets into some, and he does a great job with it, by the way. This isn't like wonky academic talk. He gets into like, why do people buy? Like, what are paths to persuasion? Like, how do you persuade someone? And how do you make that deeper connection with them based on the why? The why they do things, the why they think the way they do. And one of the things that we've run into a lot, especially in the last like three or four years, is with today's tools, I'm able to, to get so much more information on my customers, like behaviors and actions, especially online, right? I can see everything that's going on. I can get survey data back like in 20 hours that used to take me four weeks that tells me exactly what they think about my brand, about other people's brands, things like that. So I know what they do and I know what they think. The sticky part, the hard part is I don't often know why they do what they do or why they think what they think. And so that's why we dig into consumer insights to kind of get at that underlying why that can lead to a path to, 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 finding, to finding a connection with them and then driving growth. In positioning in module five, positioning in an advertisement basically is like, what is the main thing you want to tell people? What's the main thing you want to get across, right? And so that's the point of it. And generally in advertising, we're trying to, to, to communicate some information that either changes awareness of our benefits, or maybe it changes some perceptions. There was a misperception. We're trying to correct a misperception. We're trying to elevate a perception, but we're trying to communicate some message. And at its heart, you can think of positioning simply as like, why should someone choose you over the competition or doing nothing, right? And so it's a really simple idea. It's just, why should they choose you? The hard part is, this is probably the hardest thing we do in marketing, right? Like getting to that like answer of like, why should someone choose this? I don't know. It's hard. And so how do we get there? How do we figure out like, what is that thing I could say or stand for that's going to get them to choose me over the competition? And so in this section, we're going to talk about how do you get to that, right? How do you find that place? Because again, I, I just taught this in my, in my core marketing class last week. And I told them like, this is literally the hardest thing we do, right? Because it's either overloaded or it's vague or it's undifferentiated and it doesn't matter to consumers. And so how do we get this right? And then module six, we get into execution. And this is back to me. And I will talk about uh, media planning. I'll talk about digital media. I'll talk about how do you make a great ad? Like what goes into the execution, right? Um, and it's, there's things that can go like, so luckily I always say that, I mean, luckily I've made so many mistakes in my life that, that it's enabled me to have a career as a professor telling people how to avoid the mistakes I've made. But we're gonna talk about a lot of those things, like what to do, what you can do right, what you can do wrong, where are people making mistakes, even like, like right now, when you see that they shot this, they're gonna, there's some people are gonna shoot a commercial for the Super Bowl, and then they're gonna try to take that commercial and then like shove it into like Instagram. And it's not gonna work because they didn't think about that before they shot the ad. It's like. Come on, there's, it's not that many rules that we have to think about just to avoid some common pitfalls. And so we'll talk about that in the execution section. And then finally, Derek will come back on module seven and talk about evaluation and measurement. Like there's a lot of research going on, especially back here with some of my colleagues on how do we best measure ads? 
And so we're going to talk about what are the best practices in, in ad measurement. And then one of the great things that you're going to learn, and maybe you'll curse us for this later, is you'll never be able to watch an ad again and not be able to start evaluating it. Like, uh, you're just done. Like, from now on, someone's going to watch an ad and be like, oh, that was funny. And you're going to be like, well, it was funny, but it failed on these three criteria, right? So you, you are just going to be in the club of people that can never watch an ad the same way again. But what's great is we do give you this tool uh, it's a really concrete tool that we've used consistently, and we'll use it in the Super Bowl ad review if you see that in the news somewhere, um, that allows us to give concrete, objective feedback to the agency during ad creation. And so one of the issues we run into is a lot of times when we're looking at ads, um, we'll see them in the very early stages. And we're asked as clients to evaluate an ad. Um, and it's like, you know, it's a storyboard or it's a script. And you're like, well, is it good? Is it not good? Uh, do you approve it? If you do approve it, like what changes would you like to see? And so what can happen is we get into kind of like subjective, I don't know if I like this, or I'm not sure about that. I don't know if I want red. Let's just make it easy, okay? Let's, let's give you a tool that allows you to kind of go through the five or six criteria that makes an ad successful. And then you can give specific feedback along those lines to the agency. And you can say things like, you know what? I think this is really strong on breakthrough. It's really gonna get awareness, but I'm worried that the brand linkage is soft. I'm worried that people aren't gonna remember our name, right? And so we'll give you things like that. So you can say, you can have a really good conversation with the agency about what's working and what, what potentially isn't working on the ad. And then as it progresses, you can say, well, if we still have debate about this, this is something we can take to test or we can solve it right here. But it, it takes it from being a subjective kind of discussion that can lead into like bad feelings and negative outcomes to a very objective discussion that, that's focused on like, what do we all want from the ad? Oh, we all agree on that here's a clean set of criteria that we can use to say this is good and this is bad, right? Or this is not working and here's how we can fix it. And so I think that's one of the more helpful tools that you'll leave with is just that concrete, being able to concrete, concretely evaluate an ad and give specific feedback. So that is basically how the thing's set up, right? It is the strategist side of development of communications, all right? So let's go to the next one. What have we got? Learning outcomes. Okay. So one of the nice things about the, the back end of this program, it's run by uh, Emeritus and they do a really good job with, this isn't just like a set of video lectures where you can just watch it and you're like, oh, that's fun. Like there's very specific learning objectives for each chapter. There's very specific activities that are tied to the learning objectives. Like you don't get out of it without learning something, right? And so you're going to come out of this like with the ability to write a really good brief, okay? You're gonna come out of this the ability to like identify and prioritize targets. You're gonna know what a good consumer insight is and how to find it. You're going to be able to figure out why you're better from positioning standpoint, identify that, clearly state that. You're gonna be able to look at a media plan and say, hmm, Here's where I see some strengths and weaknesses based on some criteria. Again, objective, not subjective, not like, I don't know, I don't really watch HTTV or I don't know if I, people, these people watch sports. Objective criteria to say what, where it could be strong and weak. And then, and as I mentioned just previously, what are the best testing methodologies we could use to see if this ad is actually working or not working? And then I think really importantly, the ability to like on the spot, give concrete feedback on where an ad has strengths and weaknesses, which I think is really, really important. And as I mentioned before, I've been so happy to get feedback from the students, like, I mean, throughout the course, right? Because they're, they're constantly meeting with our, with our course moderators who, are, who also work with me, like at Kellogg, that like know the program and they're just able to, to take what they're learning and applying it right away. And I, and I just love it, I love it, so. That's the outcomes. What do we got next? Learning experience. You want to talk about that, Mark? I'd be happy to, Professor McTake. Thank you so much for taking us through the modules of this program. Friends, if you have questions for Professor McTake, if you want to hear more, I want to hear more. So I'm guessing you want to hear more. 
So what will your learning experience be like? Well, Professor McTigg already talked a little bit about this. This is a much more dynamic course than your traditional online learning program where they just throw a bunch of YouTube videos at you and they say, good luck. That is not gonna be your learning experience with this program. This is a dynamic, rich, interactive experience. And so what you can expect from advertising and marketing communication strategy is both live and recorded sessions with Kellogg faculty, individual and group activities, moderated discussions. So as you can see here, you're gonna be having two live webinars with our amazing faculty and also office hours with industry practitioners. Now these industry practitioners, they sometimes go by many different names. In a traditional academic environment, uh, they might be called teaching assistants or TAs. But what we have are these course leaders, these industry practitioners, that are gonna be doing these office hours with you. They're the ones who are gonna be moderating those deep dive discussions that you're gonna be having during this program. And we also have our dedicated program support team available to you for technical issues 24 seven. So you have our rockstar faculty, our incredible course leaders and our dedicated program support team. And you will feel supported you will feel supported throughout this entire program thanks to those three different groups of professionals that are going to be supporting you at all times. You're also going to be learned by doing with try it activities. So uh, like I mentioned before, like Professor McTigg then mentioned as well, the whole point of this program is for you to immediately apply this knowledge, this thought leadership into your current career. And like Professor McTigg said, many of our past students have applied this while they're still in the program. Something happens in week two or week three, and that's immediately applied to their work. They're not even done with the modules yet. They're not even done with the program yet, and they're already applying it in their current careers. So you're gonna be having these tried activities uh, to help you learn by doing. Um, you're also gonna get a strategic toolkit to guide your advertising efforts. Uh, and also that peer learning and feedback. So those course leaders are gonna be engaging in deep dive discussions, but those moderated discussions that you all have, that's gonna help you learn from each other. All of you, our current and future students, all have experiences that you are gonna be bringing to this program, and we want you to enrich this program yourself. So that is part of it as well. So you're not just, a, a cohort with this program is not just a bunch of people who are coincidentally learning at the same time, you are learning together. So that is something we're particularly proud of. And that's why this is such a rich, interactive and dynamic experience and such an incredible Mark, program is because of all I this. Want to build on, I want to build on that real quick. I mean, it's of one course. of the things that comes back like the most that we hear is like that the peer feedback, right? The peer learning and the sharing of stories. Like it's incredibly valuable. It's incredibly valuable in my classroom. It's incredibly valuable here. We, you know, we're talking about something in class and then inevitably some student is dealing with something like this or has just dealt with something like this and has a story that can immediately kind of like help support and explain the topic at hand. And it just becomes immediately relevant for everyone. So I think that's really incredible. The other thing, just to add on with the industry practitioners that lead this course, one of them, uh, Rebecca, I have to teach, I'm doing um, this Tuesday, I'm doing something on digital and influencers and things like that, my night class. And so I reached out to Rebecca because I know she's more of an expert on influencers than I am. And so like, I'm turning to these industry practitioners for like my class as well to be like, hey, Rebecca, I know you know more about this topic than I do. So like, this is how I'm thinking about it. Is this how you think about it? So I love them. They're not, they're not random. They are awesome. They are fantastic. And you're going to love them too. Thank you so much for that, Professor. So yeah, so all, so all of that is what you can expect from this program at Kellogg. Upon successful completion of the program, Kellogg Executive Education will grant you a verified digital certificate of completion uh, to the participants. You participants will be assessed across nine content areas to obtain the certif certificate of completion. And this is something that you can put on your resume, on your CV, on your LinkedIn. You can find other students who have previously taken uh, this program. You can find future students who will be taking this program. Uh, the, um, the connections you will make, the networking that is possible just from this one verified digital certificate uh, are limitless. So you will be able to not just have this knowledge that you can apply immediately to your career, but you'll also be able to brag about it and you'll be able to use it uh, to leverage any opportunities in your current and future uh, career prospects. And if at any point, if you have any additional questions as well, uh, please feel free to send them to Kellogg at emeritus. Uh, and don't 
miss the next opportunity to take advertising and marketing communication strategy from Kellogg School of Management. Uh, so it's, I think it's from Mamta, who manages a global media representation business on the sales side. Trying to figure if this course will help me understand the client, the ad agency, yeah. their briefs and objectives better to be able to offer them a better sales proposition. Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, so um, I do have in my in my regular class, I have a bunch of folks from Google um, that are on the sales side, and that's what they're looking for, right? Like, how do I? <clears throat> My clients might come to me with like, hey, this is what I think my objective is. But knowing what you know after this, you can say, well, have we, have we thought about this? I mean, is there a better way we could structure this? Is there a smarter way to approach this? And then you can help them refine their objectives. You can help them get the most out of their media based on kind of what you know about strategy. And I think what's going to help you do is, is kind of tie it back into more of their business goals and get beyond maybe the superficial stuff that you're getting now. Um, it will definitely help you understand their briefs better and probably give you the tools to, well, it would definitely give you the tools to help them improve their brief. That might be a touchy subject, but I know you'll be able to help them, right? There's no way you can leave this course and not be able to help someone write a better brief. Um, you should be able to do that after the first module, right? And so I, Yes, this course is probably like, like the exact person doing this is the one writing the brief on the client side and kind of guiding the strategy. But that's why I have in there in the target slide at the beginning, uh, there's just a lot of folks from the agency side that have gotten value out of this because it makes the equips them that much smarter when they're talking to their clients about, about the advertising strategy. So I do, I feel good about that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it if I didn't. So I do feel good about it. I feel good about you getting out on it. Um, I did. When you showed that certificate before, Mark, I, I have noticed like on LinkedIn, because I, you know, will connect with the students on LinkedIn. And I saw we must have a, we must have a module or a, a course ending right now because they're popping up right now talking about, um, talking about the course, which is great. And one of the things, I mean, it'd be awesome if you could just talk to someone that had taken the course before, because I think they'd be able to shine even more light on it. Could you please give more examples about how we can apply this knowledge to the everyday life of a marketing manager and my boss's requests to increase clients? <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's, that's such a good question, Antonio. And I'll be honest with you. Um, I took this Kellogg advertising class when I was I don't know, 28 in the early 2000s. And the class was super theoretical. And it was like principles of advertising persuasion and things like that. And I worked in advertising and I was kind of like, this is all awesome, but I don't know if I can use any of it right away, right? One of the things you'll notice as we go through all these things is I'll have, we'll use specific examples. I'll use real life examples all the time of like, um, in, in your question, it's like, how can I get more clients? Like, I'll talk about that in objectives, right? Like, where are you going to source clients from? Okay. And then given that, like, what are we going to have to say to that specific group of clients to, to be able to move the needle? And so I, I really have absolutely zero fears that this is too theoretical. Like it's, it's been washed of that to a certain extent. Like, yes, there'll be some theory, of course, in like, especially when you get into like behavioral insights and, and, and rules of persuasion and things like that. But like, the backbone of the course is like, we're handing you like for, for like practical frameworks you can use tomorrow to get to better decisions and get to better strategies. And so, uh, yeah, it is, it is meant to be like immediately practical. So good question. Definitely a fear that I would have. And yes, I, I, <laughs> I hope we've scrubbed, scrubbed this course clean. So it's, it's all practical. <laughs> Professor, uh, just to put you on the spot, uh, do you have yeah. like any anecdotes or any stories about, because you mentioned about how our students will often, like you said, sometimes after module one or two, will be immediately applying it to their career. Do, do you have, off the, I know I'm throwing a curveball at you, but do you have any like feedback or an example of something of like some concrete thing that was fixed or some completely new approach where a student came back in week four or five and was like, Hey, that thing that you did taught us in week one or week two, it's, it went great. Well, it's, it was funny. Like the one I got this past week was from a student that said, you know, it, the timing worked out 
such that my boss literally asked me to write a strategy like two days after we covered this. And I was able to go back and present it in this framework that made sense. And I knew what I was talking about. And the boss was like blown away because it was new to their organization. They hadn't seen this approach exactly before. And the stuff that we're talking about, the frameworks we're giving you, they're not like crazy, weird academic things. It's based on like all the work we've seen over time across industries. And so it's not like B2C specific or anything weird like that. It's, it's just solid frameworks that we've that have been proven to work across industries. Um, but she was able to be like successfully create like a communications brief, like two days after finishing the module and her boss was blown away. And I was like, that's awesome. And that was when we just got in the last like four days. Um, and it's, it's fun. I, I just get these emails like all the time where it was like, and another one was like, I got pulled into like a creative review the other day and they asked me to go first, um, which is a high pressure situation for some, like a younger employee. Um, Cause the you know, agency presents that this person had to go first. And she said, I was able to be really succinct to give them three things I thought were working well and three areas that could use improvement. And then everyone else was kind of blown away. I mean, because usually, I mean, usually in that position, the person like kind of stumbles, they are on the spot. It's, they're not, you know, it's kind of meant to be kind of a pressure test for these young employees and the ability to say like, no, 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 I got it. Three things that are working, three things that maybe need a little more work, pass, pass it on to the next person. It was awesome. And so she was uh, incredibly pleased at her ability to do that. So was I. Thank you so much, Professor. That was perfect. Um, So there are seven modules. Uh, Is this a seven-week course? And also, uh, Victoria wants to know if there's an exam at the end or what kind of knowledge checks we do. There's exams like throughout, okay? There isn't like a final, but there's like exercises every week. I mean, and I found this to be the case in my regular class. Like once I teach it, I kind of have to have you do it. So you work the muscle and it kind of locks it in. And so it's more like that. Like I'll show you how to, and like even mid module, you may, be, you may ask to t- take a break and like figure something out or find it inside, share it with your colleagues. So it's, it's a little bit of like constantly doing as you're learning to kind of cement it. And then there's like check, knowledge checkpoints along the way to make sure like, hey, did you get it? Did you get everything you need out of that module? But there isn't like a big scary exam at the end. One of the questions that I get in, in class is like, hey, are you going to teach us how to do like Facebook ads this week or place a Google ad this week? And I'd say absolutely not uh, for two reasons. Um, the first is that all of these platforms, the technical platforms, do the training for free. And so it seems insane to pay me to tell you what they will tell you for free in my own version of it. Okay. Google, like Facebook, Salesforce, they're all going to have like super great training. The other problem with doing training on these sites is that there are nuanced changes to the, to the sites every two months. And so if I was to try to like train you on Facebook advertising, even if I like put it together in December, it might not be exactly right in March. And so it's kind of like a, it's, it seems it's like a crazy effort to like, why would I try to do something better than they already do it? And then they're going to update it anyway. And so I always just send folks and we can send you the links, honestly. Um, I think I gave them to Rebecca just to like, if someone has that question, like, hey, here you go, spend a Saturday, you can figure it, go through the Google or Facebook training, they'll show you how to do it. Um, we try to stay one step above that of like, and, and I was talking to one of my friends that, that's a big Salesforce guy and, and he does, you know, has everything, you know, communicating throughout the journey and all these ads and, and emails and messages sent to go different places. And he said, it's great. It's fully automated. I asked the agency to make sure we're doing AB testing on every single thing. And then I finally looked at what they were testing and um, it was, it was dumb. Like A was dumb and B was dumb. And so, yes, we were connected through Salesforce, right moment, right person. But what we were saying was, was not smart. And like the A-B test was like green versus red. And so what I think this class is more about is like, what should A be and what should B be, right? And so, yeah, we'll get into some methodology stuff, but like, I think most of the problems I'm running into that I'm seeing from companies that I'm speaking with 
aren't that, hey, I need some help with my Salesforce training from you, McTeague. It's my folks don't even know what to start with. Like, how do I come up with something that's going to be meaningful to this person if I connect to them at this point in the journey? Like, what do I say? And I think that's where the course is going to focus more than like, how do you connect the, the pipes? Thank you so much, how Professor. We got, another, we, we, got, we got another question from Victoria here. Uh, how futuristic would some of the topics be, <laughs> i.e. considering the marketing is evolving and will never be the same since the pandemic? Oh, so one of the things we have is we have these live sessions. And so we can, t- we always think about what to do in the live sessions. Like for the next live session, I'll probably do like a Super Bowl ad recap. Um, but this is kind of fun. Sometimes we'll do like best communications of the year and we'll talk about some of the future trends. Um, but I don't know, Victoria, it's interesting. Like, I mean, there's been a huge behavior shift in terms of commerce online. Um, there's a shift towards kind of an ongoing shift towards social platforms. And then social commerce is becoming more popular, especially in like India and Asia. Um, advertising communications. I don't know, like we're still screwing up in the same places we screwed up for 25 years. I mean, a lot of the pipes that we're using are a little different, but it'd be fun. I would love to have, I mean, and I do like one of my live sessions, I think is usually like what's changing and what's not changing. Um, We're going to see, like, I'm super excited, like Bud Light. I'm sorry for being so American centric on this, but the Super Bowl is coming up this Sunday. And so Bud Light is launching this new ad and they're going to launch nfts and they're going to charge 400 dollars a piece for these nfts and i'm super interested to see if this is finally the death of nfts and brands like we've had some success like budweiser did some then that worked but like everyone's jumping on the nft bandwagon for brands and i think the consumers only have like there's like so many consumers that are into it and then like at some point, maybe it's cool to have a Budweiser NFT. I don't think it's cool to have like a Kraft Singles NFT. I don't know. I mean, I think we might be at the end of it. I think we might see the death right here on Sunday of NFTs. So we'll see. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite topics is like what's happening next in advertising. And then, you know what's funny is I think that if I was going to go into like, maybe I could do a session on like what machine learning is doing to advertising. Because I think that's, that's where I see a lot of heat these days because machine learning is going to get like super democratized in the next two years. Like it's going to come out of the realm of data scientists and like, you'll be able to just throw it into a program. Like Google will have an AI thing. You'll be able to dump your data in. It'll run it through like 12 different kinds of algos and you'll get an answer like literally in Google for free or something like that. That's probably two years away at tops. And so I think that's what we should probably be thinking about in terms of futuristic stuff. But good question. Fun topic. Professor, I just want you to know, I just wrote down craft single NFT. I think if I, that's probably the best Instagram handle of all time <laughs> in craft oh, single totally. NFT. That's fantastic. Um, I did want to actually, I, so I actually, so a question that popped into my head, professor, because we talk about, you know, people who make these marketing and um, advertising decisions, but, uh, you know, oftentimes we get questions from students asking like, well, I'm in this specific industry. Will this work for me? I wonder like, yeah, yeah. um, cause when I think like huge, you know, you've mentioned the Super Bowl several times. Like when I think of like ad saturation, at least in the United States, you know, mm-hmm. two of the biggest ad saturations we get are Super Bowl ads, but also political ads. And I wonder how much like, um, <laughs> do, do you ever get people working in the political sphere? Like when it comes to political advertising? No, very, very rarely. I've had like two, I think honestly that the, and not that they couldn't use it. Right. It's just that there's not a lot of really good political ads, the really good strategy behind it. I mean, maybe you just don't see it very often. Right. And I think if, if, if we had more, you know, political folks take the course, we might see some better uh, political ads. Um, I think the more common question is, listen, I'm in B2B or I'm in pharma and I don't know if this is right for me. And and I think that it's, I mean, those are the two people I talk to most, the two industries I speak with most, right? Um, Because they they frequently, I mean, pharma, at least this is US centric. In, In the US, pharma spends a lot of money right? And they have a lot of legal limitations. And so they need as much help as they can get 
and breakthrough and messaging and things like that. Uh, and then B2B, we're starting to, I think we're starting to see a shift where B2B is becoming, is kind of getting out of their shell. And they had for a long time been very function driven and they still can be, but we're starting to see a lot better B2B communications, especially in the tech space, right? And so in the brands that are kind of taking that first leap into being like a little bit better and spending a little more thought on their creative strategy are standing out in their space. And so I think that the opportunity might be even bigger uh, for B2B folks. And yeah, it's not like a different playbook applies. It's just slightly more complicated in terms of like multiple targets and longer decision journey. Thank you so much, Professor. All right, but do you have any other final thoughts to share with our future students? I think that the last thing I would say is that when, when we're introducing the course, um, what we always talk about, what Derek and I talk about is that advertising is, is a very, it's a very hard game. Okay. And it's, it's, it's hard to get like a home run every time. Okay. And sometimes brands will do that um, by luck. And I think the purpose of the course and the outcome of the course is that our students will leave here being able to consistently produce better advertising than their peers. Like not because of luck, but because they're just, they've trained to be better at it. And so their outputs will be consistently better. We're going to shift their curve from having some good ads and some bad ads to almost all good ads with some home runs, right? Because we're just making everything coming from a better, stronger base is going to make all the output better. And so I think there's the output of the course is you have meaningfully better advertising as a result. And if you don't, then we failed. But so far, we've consistently heard that is the case. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, and thank you all of you for joining us today. Uh, if you have any final questions, please send them to Kellogg at emeritus.org. That's Kellogg with two L's, two G's at emeritus.org. Program support is going to be popping that link back in the chat box. Thank you, everybody, for your time, for your attention. Uh, again, any further questions, please send them to Kellogg, two L's, two G's, Kellogg at emeritus.org. Thank you all so much, and we look forward to having you in the classroom. Have a beautiful day, everybody.